Thank you. I have been approached by many, and it is a serious problem. I hope to hear the questions tonight and hear some good answers. Thank you. Thank you. John Henry. Uh, good evening. Um, from the first time uh, Dave walked into my office uh, back in 1989, I know the refuge was a special place. And I got to meet Clarence, so I want to thank the volunteers that work here as well and the staff. You know, you're going to hear a lot of stories tonight and you'll hear some things, but some of the things that you might not know is we'll talk about the deficit. You're right, you can't run a deficit, but the deficit is the ice storm when we put in the numbers to the province. And if you remember, the 22 mayors got together and the promise guaranteed to pay the city's portion, which was $1.7 million. And in the event that we go there, we've made all the additional things we do to find the savings we need to cover that. But we have a winter rate, uh, winter snow stabilization fund. And we also have a tax rate stabilization fund. So if we are in a deficit, we'll take care of it until the province gives us the money. And if the real story about the depot came out in 2004, the city spent $113,000 on a Giffel study to talk about a depot on a, brown, or on a green field beside our animal services and forestry yard that you don't know about, but the report exists that was $113,000. The depot at that time was $32 million. Never approved. And, uh, and if you'd allow me to continue, um, you can uh, find uh, that report, or if you can't find a report, I'll send you the numbers. And as for the Auditor General, there are only three cities in Ontario that have Auditor Generals. Ottawa, Sudbury, and the City of Toronto. Now, Markham used to have one, and Windsor used to have one, but they got rid of the Auditor General. They're doing what we're doing. Internal auditing and cost controls, and, it, and that's how we're going to make it work. So tonight, as you listen to the stories, please feel free to go to votejohnhenry.ca and see our website and you'll be able to see the entire platform and some of the truths that you might not hear tonight. Oh. Oh. Thank you. Uh, just for me, you might candidates not to interrupt opening or closing remarks, please. Well, thank you for having me, Clarence, and thank you for putting together this special evening for us to bring forward our platforms to uh, a, a curious public. Um, there are many different ideas, and I, I started my uh, introduction, or Clarence said, did my introduction, uh, identifying me as a leader at a very young age. Um, it, it is a true fact that I was uh, considered the worst uh, worst influence on the student body as a whole, but uh, I, I was <coughs> put that in because I was trying to identify that we, um, as young people, don't, I, I'm not a young person anymore, but as at the time, uh, we are often identified incorrectly, and we don't aspire to what we can do in our life and achieve uh, until we're older. And we might not always get the chance in a place like the refuge and a uh, community that uh, develops and, and m m helps that uh, creativity and that maturity um, grow is important. And it's, it's difficult when you come from broken homes and with divorce rates being as high as they are and uh, you know CAS being involved and I have a whole different story on that but that's for another time uh, it, it's it's a challenge to to find your road and you know programs like the Re refuge and and a community that develops uh, a way to move forward and help you nurture and find your road because every path is different and it's important that we help nurture that. The best way I can say it is that um, our future is in our youth and the only way we can make things is uh, Mr. Henry will probably talk about the 1500 new jobs in here but most of them are in retail and, and they're minimum wage jobs they don't offer much opportunity. We have to teach the skills to give our youth the skills to have achieve better things. Thank you. Work. Thank, thank you. Uh, I, I have no notes tonight, but I'm going to speak from the heart and probably say publicly some things I've never said before. Because I would have been, in my youth, a, a youngster that might have used a center like the Refuge Center, but these things didn't exist when I was a youth. I was in the children's aid from the age of five to eight, and then for the next number of years, I was boarded out and 
perfectly independent. When my family got together, my mother and four children, we lived in one room in downtown Car Cabbage Town on Sherburn Street. Every room had a different drunk. <laughs> and rather than using the same toilet that 50 people or so would use, we had a pail in our room. And <clears throat> so this is a different kind of background. I could have used this, and I have great empathy for the students, that the youth that come here. And I could say that despite my background, I have the highest education level of anybody on this panel. I have 28 years of administration experience and supervision experience of university educated staff in the Scarborough school system. I was the fastest promoted principal of my era. Why? Because as a student deprived youngster, I learned to be independent, to know that if I was going to have something, I would have to earn the money to get it. So I would ten have seconds. ten paper routes, not ten, three paper routes. And if I needed a pair of shoes, I had to raise the money to buy those shoes. So you can know how careful I was with spending my money. And these were great lessons. All of my youth led to my outstanding success, I think, in life. Okay, Bill, I'll hold you to that. Thank you. All mayoral candidates were invited. Some chose not to participate. Some did not respond by email. Uh, Joe in Gino uh, was not able to come due to having business south of the border, but I did give him the opportunity for a two-minute opening statement read by one, his, one of his representatives. So at this time, I'd like to uh, invite uh, Brandon. Two minutes. Thank you. The views and opinions expressed in this letter do not represent mine. <laughs> Dear fellow taxpayers, I write these words with great regret that I can't be here before you today. Because the previous business engagements have me in the United States until Thursday. On Thursday at 3 p.m., I will be visiting the refuge to meet with those that wish to uh, attend. At this time, I will answer all of your questions personally. I just want to make it public that I support the efforts of the refuge and groups that are doing great work to help our youth and those in need. I think it is all our job to contribute to great causes. I do not think it is enough to make empty promises or make proposals on false premise to win elections. For this reason, I am challenging all other candidates to put forth a real contribution to the refuge as good faith and a testament of the candidates' true and genuine support for the cause. I, Joe and Gino, pledge the sum of $10,000 worth of advertising in the Oshawa Durham Central newspaper, Durham's largest and oldest independent newspaper serving the Durham region. This contribution has nothing to do with my political ambitions. This is a corporate offering in the name of support uh, of a great cause. And a clear example of the benefits and partnerships that will be working on your behalf. This contribution can be used to promote events, gather donations, and or generate funds for the refuge. Next. As your new mayor, I can assure you that youth issues will be one of my priorities, as it should be that of any good community leader. Initiatives such as the creation of funds for shelter for men, women, LGBT, good paying jobs for our youth, affordable housing, creation of an Oshawa Youth Committee, development of social and cultural youth centers. Team and Gino campaign is the only campaign that is bringing actual jobs, good paying jobs, through our many proposed projects, including the 1.2 billion waterfront uh, development project, the eight, uh, 800 million for the development of our downtown, two billion dollar a year worth of business venture in China, and the 200 million mixed affordable housing project coming to Oshawa. <laughs>